When this lens was released a few years ago, I thought this is probably going to be one of the most popular lenses of all time because it was an engineering marvel and at the time no other lens could do what this lens could do. And the handful of people that got their hands on them in the early stages had nothing but incredibly good things to say about them and I didn't find a single negative review of this lens. But since then, it's really gone quiet, and I have not heard this lens talked about very much. A few comments on the forums, what have you. But really, this lens has become an incredible best-kept secret for wide-angle lenses. This lens is a 9mm f5.6 rectilinear lens, and that makes this the widest-angle rectilinear lens ever made. And in all honesty, I'd forgotten all about this lens until a message showed up in my inbox asking if I'd like to review and make a video about the lens, of course, of which I said yes. They said I'm under no obligation to say anything, and they had no say in the making of the video, but they did send me the lens for free so that I could test it out and make a video about it. And the first thing I want to talk about is that 9 millimeter focal length, because that is the incredible thing about this lens. And what those millimeters on the lens represent, whether it be a 15 millimeter lens, 20 millimeter lens, or in this case, a 9 millimeter lens. Nine millimeters is the difference or the distance between the optical center of the lens and the sensor. And just to give you an idea how this works, if you can imagine that you're looking through a window and you get, say, 10 centimeters away from that window. Now we're talking millimeters, not centimeters, but just for example, I'm going to say we're 10 centimeters away. And you imagine how much you can see out of that window. The edges are cut off. You can't see the widest distances of the scene that's outside that window. The closer you get to that window, the wider you can see. And at the very end, as you imagine, as you get closer and closer, your field of view rapidly increases to the point where you can almost see everything once you get to the point where your nose is effectively touching the window. So there is actually a much bigger difference in your field of view going from sort of this position, we'll call this 10 millimeters, to 9 millimeters compared to when we're out here, say we're at, say, 24 millimeters and we go to 23 millimeters. There's not a big, uh, as big a difference there. So what we're talking about is as we get closer and closer at that 9 millimeters, the field of view is opening up crazy wide. And in this particular lens, it can see 135 degree field of view. That is the widest field of view that you can get on a lens that is a non-fisheye lens. And to achieve this result and what they've done with this lens is they have created one of the most sophisticated optical designs in a fixed or prime lens that I've ever seen. It is a 14 element lens in 10 groups, which they have fit in this tiny, tiny little lens. And it really needs all those lens elements to be able to take that huge wide image and then to get it at that really extreme angle and throw it flat on that sensor and eliminate the curvature that you get with a fisheye style lens. And it's a full frame lens that comes in all the popular mirrorless mounts. You're gonna get E mount, L mount, Z mount, and my personal favorite, M mount. And if you don't want know what M mount is, M mount is a Leica mount, which is originally designed back in, I think, 1959. It was launched for Leica rangefinder style cameras. But you can get modern mirrorless Leica cameras, which take this L mount, which is the version that I've got here. The nice thing about the L mount version is you only need a very small or thin adapter to adapt it to any mirrorless camera. So with this tiny thin adapter, you can adapt this lens to your L mount, Z mount, E mount camera, thereby essentially getting a lens which is a universal lens. That's why anytime there's an M mount lens available, I always go for the M mount because that way I can use it on my Sony or my L mount or my Nikon cameras. And although this is essentially the same lens that was released a few years ago, this best kept secret lens that almost nobody's talking about, the big thing that has happened just recently is there has been a significant price drop. So the price on this lens, the retail price on this lens has dropped by around $200, which is quite significant. So I will put some links in the description below to the best prices or any sales I know about. So for current pricing and availability, just check the links below. Okay, so we got this crazy wide angle lens. What is it good for? Well, the first thing that I found it great for is cityscape and walking around a city. Often if you're traveling, maybe you're going through New York City or a historic city or a place that's got sort of those old cobblestone laneways, which are sort of tight with the stone buildings on either side. 
And I find when you come away from those locations and you've taken photos and you want to share them with your friends and family, often what you find is the photos just don't do justice to what you've seen or what you've experienced. And that's because cities can have this completely wrap around effect. Our eyes have peripheral vision where we see something that we're really focusing on. Our brain will focus on what's sort of in the middle of our vision. But a big part of what we're experiencing is all the way to the sides. We're getting this huge wide field of view with our eyes and it's a completely immersive experience when we're walking through these type of cities, New York City, historic city, what have you. Our cameras and the lenses that we have traditionally had with the cameras just cannot capture this wide field of view. This lens goes closer to that than any lens I've ever tested. And that's because it's got that 135 degree field of view. So your images feel completely immersive, like you are being sucked into the scene and you're sort of part of the scene itself. The other thing this is gonna be great, and particularly when you're sort of touring or going through historic cities, is interior. Now, whether that be sort of modern architecture or historic architecture or, or churches, this is, once again, gets you that wraparound image. It's going to go all the way to the sides. It's going to make you feel part of the scene. It's also going to get you almost a surreal type effect, particularly when you're in sort of modern architecture with interesting lines or converging lines. It is a really, really immersive, interesting effect that you're sort of not going to get with any other sort of lens. The other thing I will mention is both in cityscape and in interior, because the lens is so wide, you're actually going to get a lot of scenes that are high contrast scenes. And what I mean by that is this lens is going to be seeing so much of the scene that it's going to be seeing into some of the darkest corner areas of the image or the scene that you're standing in. But it's also going to pick up many of the brightest or highlighted areas, maybe sun coming through a window. That can be a bit of a challenge, and there's two ways that I found to really deal with that. One is you shoot a bracketed exposure and do an HDR photo, which I've done to some degree of success. But the other thing, and probably what I like the most, is taking those images, go ahead and allow the dark areas to be dark, allow the light areas to be light, and convert it into a black and white photograph. And the black and white images that I've taken with this lens are absolutely stunning because it takes advantage of this huge amount of contrast we get in these scenes when you're seeing this huge wide field of view. So as a black and white lens, this is be quickly becoming one of my favorite lenses of all time. The other place that this is an obvious candidate for is landscape photography, simply because it sees so wide. Now, it's important that I state as a landscape lens, because this is so wide, there's going to be a huge emphasis on your foreground. This is not going to be a lens for taking photos of mountains that are way in the background. When you take a photo with this lens, really the emphasis is on that foreground. So you really have to be the type of landscape photographer which is very good at composing a moving image that has a foreground that is compelling. Now that can be some grass, that can be some sort of a rock formation or something like that. You're often gonna be tilting the lens down so you get more of that foreground, sort of more of that ground element in your scene. So I think it is an excellent landscape lens, but it's also a landscape lens that's going to require some amount of skill to be able to master, and it's definitely not something I would recommend for sort of a beginning landscape photographer. Now, just having a look at the build quality in this lens, this is an incredibly well-built little lens. I mean, it is absolutely tiny. It's shockingly small for all the glass elements that it's got in it. It's an all metal lens. It's based on a metal lens mount. It has a built-in metal lens hood, which is non-removable. It has a really nice clicked and smooth aperture ring, and it has a very, very nice and well-damped focus ring. And I found nailing focus on this lens super, super easy, just because of the way that the focus was spaced. You also should know with wide angle lenses like this, once you start getting out close to infinity, pretty much anything is in focus. So when you're trying to focus at f5.6 and you're focusing off in the distance, you might find you're, twi you're sort of twisting the focus ring and it doesn't seem like much is changing. And that's because it has an incredibly deep depth of field and pretty much everything is in focus through all of that. So you kind of got to get mentally used to that and kind of know you just twist it until it's 
in focus and there's no point in going back and forth to try to find what's better because pretty much everything is in focus at that stage. The other thing you'll notice is there is no filter thread on the front of it. There is the ability to get a filter set that goes over this and then you can use large square filters on it, which I think this would be a great long exposure city lens, getting the sort of blurring of the people or getting lights go by at night. So I think it really would be a nice lens to have that filter set with, particularly because it sees so wide so the streaking of the lens, uh, streaking of the lights of cars and different things at night or people going by will come right by the edge of that image. So you'll see those lights getting bigger and bigger as they get closer to the lens. So I think it would be a cool use for it, but I don't have that, that filter system. Now I wanna look at the optical qualities of this lens because it's no good if it can do all these things if you don't get an excellent sharp and detailed image. And the first thing I wanna talk about is distortion. So this is a nine millimeter rectilinear lens and that's really the headline feature of this lens. So this both nine millimeters and rectilinear. And that means that it's a non fisheye lens and the straight lines in your scene should be relatively straight. And in this case, they are. You do get a modest amount of barrel distortion, which is normal for wide angle lenses. Now, this company also makes a series of lenses that are called zero D lenses, which have zero distortion, which means the lens, the lines in those uh, images are perfectly straight. This lens has a very modest amount of barrel distortion. Now, in the photos and the samples that I've shared, I haven't modified the barrel distortion or corrected it because I wanted you to see what it looked like right out of camera, but it is a very, very modest amount and it's very easily corrected if you want to do that. And there is a Lightroom profile for it, so you can just click one click in Lightroom and it fixes all that. Now, the next thing we need to look at is vignette. Now, it's a very wide lens and it's a very small lens and there is reasonably heavy vignette and the vignette really doesn't go away. Now, it's very consistent, it's easy to correct. You can use the lens profile corrections uh, in Lightroom to correct it, but it is there. And in the images that I've shared, once again, I've just let, left the vignette as it is, so this is what it looks like coming out of the camera. And the thing that I don't mind about the vignette is, that scene is so wide that sometimes there's things on the corners that are being kind of crazy stretched that you don't necessarily want to draw the viewer's eye to, but they form a good part of making the image feel so immersive. So the vignette kind of works quite well where it gets you this wider part of the scene that you want the viewer to feel sort of drawn into the photo with, but the vignette kind of darkens it so it doesn't make it super, super prominent. So I, I actually kind of don't mind the vignette, and in all the photos you've seen, I've just left the vignette as it is. Now, the next thing I want to look at is chromatic aberration, and this lens has very well controlled chromatic aberration. In fact, there's practically none, and this is something that this company is very, very good at. Controlling chromatic aberration is almost a specialty, and some of their lenses are actually called C lenses, which stands for like controlled chromatic aberration or something like that. So you're not going to really have any distracting chromatic aberration in your images that you take with this lens. And probably most importantly with a lens like this, when you're capturing so much of the scene and there's going to be so many details is the sharpness and detail and the sharpness and detail coming out of this lens is absolutely incredible. It's razor sharp in the center of the frame. And as you get to the corners, it is still quite sharp, but you do need to be aware that once you get to the corners, to be able to get that really wide image and stretch it and put it on the sensor, those corners are being stretched in sort of a crazy amount. So they do look sort of smeared and less detailed. It's not because of any poor quality optics in the lens. It's just an element of when you are stretching an image that much and putting it on the sensor, this is how it's going to look. The one thing that I will say is because of that, you do have to be very careful about what is particularly in the corners and sometimes at the side of the frames because those things do get stretched and kind of look crazy. If you have them really prominent in the frame, which is quite easy because it's gonna pick up something that's sort of right here next to you, if they are very prominent in the image, they can actually be distracting. So it's an important part of composing your image to make sure that what you've got around the outside of frames of the frame just forms a good framing composition for the photograph you're taking. And there's not an element in there that is gonna draw the viewer's eye away from the thing in the center of frame to some big distracting thing at the corner of frame. The other thing I should mention is the close focus ability of this lens. That's kind of like the superpower of this lens, this extra bonus feature. And it, it honestly, it focuses so close that I think it focuses to the point where it will focus on something that's actually touching the front of the lens or thereabout. It focuses that close. It's absolutely 
absolutely crazy. So you can create some really otherworldly, surreal images when you use the close focus ability of this lens, and it can be super, super fun to use it in that way. And so ultimately, I have to ask, who is this lens for? And the first thing I'll say is I don't think this should be your first wide angle lens. I think this is a lens for somebody who's already shooting wide angle. Maybe they are shooting down to 16 millimeters. They're comfortable shooting at that wide angle. They're enjoying the images that they're getting and they wanna take their wide angle photo or video to the next level. This is an obvious next step at nine millimeters. I also think it represents kind of an end game wide angle lens for full frame cameras. And that's because once you're at nine millimeters, we're on the edge of too wide. So I think if somebody comes out with something wider, which I don't expect they will, I'm not sure a lens any wider is going to be that usable. This is pushing the very, very limit of wide angle photography. I'll put some links in the description down below with the best prices and some discounts that I know about on this lens. And if you got any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments down below.